With the 2022 season being over, I want to focus on how the offseason can play out. This is when most teams go all in with their chips in order to be in contention for a title. As the NBA stands right now, teams are looking forward to trades that will put them on top as favorites. Uh, and this is when players want to be forced out of situations that aren't the best for them. Today, I will give you my five bold predictions about the offseason and how players will move this season. One of the most anticipated moves in this offseason is the trades for either Rudy Gobert or Donovan Mitchell. The farthest this core has ever gone has been the second round and they've blown multiple chances for a Western Conference appearance, let alone a Finals appearance. That being said, Rudy is more likely to be moved this offseason compared to Donovan Mitchell. Rudy's game seems more valuable on the market compared to Donovan Mitchell's. Uh, as more franchises are looking for great defensive bigs heading into next year. Teams like the Bulls and the Hornets are looking forward to improving their defense and getting a legitimate big on their roster. The packages that get with Rudy are better compared to the ones that get with Mitchell anyways because of his contract and the value that he brings in these trades. One trade that the Jazz could do is a swap Aiden for Gobert, uh, which makes the teams younger, more athletic, uh, and is great for building the team around Mitchell. Another trade that they can realize is Rudy Gobert for uh, going to Atlanta uh, for a package surrounding John Collins, Capella, and some draft picks. This trade gives the Jazz more front court depth while also maintaining a big with decent rim protection. These trades also give Jazz more cap flexibility so they can add more players via free agency. They can maybe even get a trade exception from any of these deals. All in all, I think that like, Rudy Gobert gives franchises more value. And if they were to go with Rudy Gobert or leave him, I think that they can bring the most back in order to build around one of their superstars. Compared to Donovan Mitchell, whose real value has been the Miami Heat for Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry as a salary filler, and even Duncan Robertson, I don't think those type of trades would bring nearly as much value as what a Gobert trade would give this team. Uh, as for the next topic, to be honest, I don't fully expect this to happen this offseason, but I do think it will happen this next fiscal season. With Russ's contract expiring, it will be almost $50 million being freed up in the cap, which is hard for many teams to pass up. Teams can use this to free up a max slot going into next free agent class which has LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. Uh, this kind of flexibility could turn a team into a contender overnight, depending on the, uh, their management of the cap space. It could also make teams get rid of long contracts that they don't want. For example, the Duncan Robinson contract that he, uh, he has for the Heat, where it's a five-year, $90 million contract. Uh, this could also be beneficial to the Lakers as they can find better fits around Braun and AD that can bring them back to contention. Uh, for example, the Nets are looking to get off of Kyrie Irving, which I'll talk about later. And they could trade uh, Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving. And that would be very beneficial. And that would give the right fit around Braun and AD that they really needed. However, the Lakers may decide to keep him for the remainder of the season. And I expect them to make him flash for the next free agent class. They have much more cap flexibility next year because both LeBron and Russ will be off their contracts, and this could lead them to finding more valuable free agents. However, I would argue that it is better to capitalize off of Russ's contract value now, because there has been hints that LeBron may leave going into next free agency. If they want to keep LeBron, they should trade Russ as soon as they can, or at least make his feel this. I recorded this a day before, the news that Jams confirmed that Kyrie and the Nets don't see eye to eye. But I will continue to do this portion because I think this is the, one of the predictions that I got right. Kyrie's future with the Nets is something that I've been eyeing since the 2021 season. The relationship between Kyrie and the front office of Brooklyn has soured since his breaks from the games earlier last season. Right now, it seems that Sean Marks is not willing to give Kyrie a long-term contract until he knows that Kyrie Irving will come into the team full and full. With that in mind, it's hard to imagine that Kyrie can return to a place like the Nets unless Marks is able to salvage this relationship. Some teams that can land Kyrie would be Portland, as they currently have the cap flexibility for my contract. Other than that, 
teams like the Miami Heat and the Lakers can pursue him and sign the trade deals. Miami needs a consistent shot creator next to Butler and Bam. Well, the Lakers could also use better fit alongside LeBron and AD as a floor spacer compared to Russell. The free agency class that has not been as stacked as previous classes that have more, more focus on players such as Bradley Beal and Levine. Teams like the Lakers and the Heat are pursuing players because they have the talents not converting the fullest out of their roster. However, it makes more sense for Levine to stay in Chicago. Uh, after having their best season since the Derrick Rose day, they were the first seed for most of the beginning of the season, but injuries ruined them and caused them to fall to the sixth seed. Shottown is still the best destination for Levine because after their first year they had much success and they could build upon that with even more trades in the future. For example, they can trade Vucevic for Rudy Gobert, as mentioned previous, and that can make their defense even better while also having a legitimate role. Along with Mark Stein alluding to Zach staying in Chicago this season, it only makes sense for him to return. And lastly, Philly moves off of Tobias Harris. So Tobias Harris has never really been the best fit along Joel. Harris operates in similar areas of the core as Joel, and he also has to play outside of his strengths. Uh, the Sixers are also looking to get off that horrendous contract and sign players that could fit better with their superstar. Uh, as Embiid is in his prime, the Sixers will have to make a move uh, that will bring a title to Philly. And this would have to be one of the major ones. Similar to Russ, Tobias' deal expires this year. Many teams could look uh, to have his contract so those teams can have fle cap flexibility going to next season so they can maybe even sign a guy like LeBron James. Uh, the OKC Thunder, for example, t could take him for one year along with a pick from Philly so they can free themselves up to haul in major restricted free agents next year, such as Jordan Poole and players like that. Another team of interest could be the Sacramento Kings, who can trade uh, Harrison Bards and other pieces so they can sign restricted free agents next year. Alright, that's going to do it for me. There are some other bold predictions that I have, but uh, I'm probably going to wait until the regular season to talk about them. And uh, with the draft coming up, uh, I expect uh, some big news to come out about how players will sign, who's going to get traded, and other stuff. Uh, as seen with the Christian Woods trade, the NBA season, all oh, the NBA offseason has already begun and it won't stop until it will. Uh, with that being said, this is Nehemiah, aka Neo. And I'll see y'all later.